Hello there, I'm Mr. Flewellen, and this video is designed to introduce you to the options process at Harrow Way. First of all, I'd like to pass you over to Mr. Serridge for an introduction to this evening. Right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our virtual Key Stage 4 Curriculum Information Evening for Year 9. It's been so nice this week to have our school community back um, and I couldn't be more proud of the students the way they've come back and straight away focused on their studies and adhering to all the control systems that we've got in place. And what we would normally do um, if we didn't have these control systems in place is meet you all in the auditorium um, you then get, having had the key input, is get a chance to go off with your children and have a presentation from my subject leaders about the subjects um, on offer for year 10 and year 11 and get a chance also to ask them questions. So as last year, we're going to have to do things slightly differently. So I will do a very brief introduction and then hand over to Mr. Flewellen, my assistant head teacher, and also my senior leader, who's got the overview um, of the year group. And he will explain the process that we're going to follow and um, give you some more guidance about sort of next, next steps. So at Harrow Way, as I have mentioned before, we are incredibly proud of our curriculum. And actually we start our planning in September. So already we've done a huge amount of work to make sure that our students get the best possible curriculum that they can. And what I'm pleased by is we've had recognition of that and I know when um, we had our last inspection, inspectors did mention that our curriculum was exceptional. And also what I was really pleased by, the way they indicated that it's carefully tailored to meet the needs of all students and that we do have a combination of both academic but also vocational qualifications for students to follow. So the format for the evening will be, um, Mr. Flewellen will start by giving you an overview of the curriculum for 2021 through to 2023. He'll also indicate on what we mean by the core subjects and also the curriculum choices for September 21. And then you'll also be able to look at the videos that the subject leaders have put together about their courses for Key Stage 4 and Year 10 and 11. And in there they've put the assessment criteria about the possible future careers that they could lead to. Um, and also some of the, if there is controlled assessment elements to it. So the videos I hope you'll find really useful on understanding more about those courses. And I'd also um, recommend if you're looking at those is maybe have the options booklet also available as well. So you can see some more of um, the detail. And in a nutshell, our curriculum, we always want to make sure that it's broad, balanced and flexible. And the flexible part of it is something we work really hard on. And as I said, that piece of work starts in September. And all students have to follow the core curriculum, which again, Mr. Flynn will outline what uh, that means. And then having had their pathways in year nine, they can now look at narrowing down those to four um, options into year 10 and year 11. So I hope you find the evening informative and the era of the website that we've um, 
put together for this, which I hope has all the information that you need. Um, so looking forward, hopefully, to seeing some of you uh, over the coming months. And um, as I said, I hope you find the evening informative. Thank you, Mr. Serridge. So the Pathways year is coming to an end and it is time to choose those final options to see us through to the end of our time at Haraway. When you have a look through your booklet, you will see that we offer two main types of qualification. GCSE courses, now all graded at grade nine to one, that generally end with a linear examination and possibly have no non-exam assessment, or what we used to call controlled assessment at all. And then BTEC or vocational courses, uh, which are graded differently and have far fewer exams than GCSE, although do still include a compulsory exam element, but tend to have continual assessment across the course. Alongside the course subjects, we believe in offering a broad and balanced selection of subjects for students to choose from. The pathways that they choose at the end of year eight gives them a selection of subjects from which they will eventually choose their final options, which they take into year 10. The GCSE gradings aren't really so new anymore, and I'm sure you will have seen these before. Really, there is no comparison between the old grades and the new grades, as it is a completely new set of grades, the one to nine system. But roughly, the old grade C lines up with the bottom of the new grade four, as you can see here. Outside of the individual progress in those subjects, these other accountability measures that you will have seen people talking about or may have seen mentioned before um, are much more a, a measure of attainment for a school. Uh, we are still judged on the amount of students achieving English and maths. Progress 8 and Attainment 8 look at progress within subjects or across the set of subjects the students take. There is also the English Baccalaureate where there is still some discussion over into exactly how this might count as an accountability measure in the future. Certainly schools are judged by the amount of students that are seen to be taking these qualifications, but there is still the thought out there um, that certain universities and employers will be looking at students having achieved qualifications in some of the subjects you see listed here. There is more detail on this in the booklet. The Progress 8 measure that I was just talking about, which links to the Attainment 8 measure as well, are designed to encourage all students to study a broad and balanced and curriculum. The new measure is based on students' progress measured across eight subjects. And for each student, the eight subjects should be a combination from what we call the three buckets. So English and Maths form bucket one, and then those baccalaureate qualifications that I was just talking about form bucket two. So that is where the expectation is that students would study sciences, computer science, geography, history, and languages, at least in some form to fill those buckets. Employers aren't just looking for qualifications, of course. Other skills are essential and we've built our curriculum and the various activities that happen around the school over the year to try and help build those skills alongside all the great stuff that's happening in lessons to build on that as well. Loads of stuff that's happening in lessons helps build towards the exams and the qualification, but also helps to build good interpersonal skills, the ability to work in teams, to be flexible and adaptable, etc. Something we strongly believe in. So I would now like to talk you through how we are going to complete the virtual remote options process this year. So all students will continue to study what we call the core curriculum, which is made up mostly of English, maths and science, which take up a considerable amount of the time for a student each week. But you will also continue to have non-examination lessons of PE, two hours a week, and Lessons of Careers Education, PSHE and RE will continue as well. Students then choose four other subjects to follow as option choices for year 10. So you can take four other subjects forward as options. So please go through really carefully the options booklet that you were sent this week and watch through the presentations from subject staff that replace the live presentations that we would have had with our ordinary options evening in school. I'd then like you to complete the curriculum options choices form, uh, which we'll be emailing through to you. And the deadline for that is Tuesday, the 16th of March. 
this is what that form looks like um, and a link will be sent to you via email. So there are a few rules uh, to keep in mind and a few uh, recommendations uh, when choosing your options from amongst the pathways that you're currently studying. All students must choose to study history or geography as one of their options. You may choose to study both to use up two options. If you have been recommended to take triple science, then you should choose this in block D. And do consider seriously whether to continue to study either French or Spanish. You would need to continue with the MFL that you are currently studying. There are a few subjects that you cannot take in combination. So you may only choose to study hospitality and catering or engineering. You, you may not study both D&T subjects. The same applies to dance and drama, where you may only take one of them. You may not take both and also to art or photography. You may also only choose options from pathway subjects that you are already studying. Uh, the exception is media studies and the two new subjects of statistics and ICT, uh, which you can take new in year 10. So again, a reminder, please, that the deadline for returning that form is the 16th of March. We suggest you use the back page of the options booklet to write out what it is you have chosen and plan to choose so that you have a record of that at home and also so that you can clearly see which choices are available in which option block. Please do not choose any subject twice and make sure that you have paid careful attention to the restrictions listed at the top of the form that I went through a moment ago. And there you have it. I really hope that this presentation, the other video presentations from subject leaders, the pathways booklet and the web page have all combined to be able to answer any questions that you have. But if you do still have any questions, then please do get in contact with the school via the tutor or contact me uh, Mr. Fluell uh, Mr. Fluellen directly, and we will answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much.